recuerda de, su, de sus primeros 13 años antes de ir a Inglaterra? Antes de ir a Inglaterra. Sí. ¿Qué do you remember your 13 years before you went to England? Can I remember? Mm -hmm. oh, nice memories. I right. prefer to forget it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we all did that. No fue una época feliz para él. It wasn't That's a happy a... time. No, it was all right. It's just that it. God, I, for... I forget. I mean, three years ago we came to Barcelona and I've forgotten that. I forget my past very quickly. All I do is think of the future, to be honest. After an eight-week journey, Farrokh arrives in Bombay, the northwestern Indian port that his Parsi ancestors had helped build. He combats the stress of being an eight-year-old alone at sea for so long by picturing the continent that awaits him. Like most visitors, his first sight of the city is the gateway to India. A city of 16 million inhabitants, Bombay is pure culture shock for little Farrokh. Hailing from a town of 60,000, he is dazed and confused by the noise and bustle. With a sense of joyous anticipation commingling with his fear of the unknown, he sets off on the train journey southeast. After hour, the Indian countryside flies past Farrokh's eyes. But his sense of wonder is tempered by homesickness, worries about his sister's emotional well-being, anxiety about what awaits him ahead, and a general sadness that he must pay for a superior education with this enormous separation from family and home. In 1955, before his ninth birthday, and at the end of a 60-day journey since leaving his parents in Zanzibar, Farrokh arrives in the town that will be his home for the next eight years, and enrolls at St. Peter's Church of England School. My name is Roy Robinson, and I am currently the officiating principal at St. Peter's School, Panchgani. The school was founded in the year 1902. It is a residential public school which presents boys for the Indian Certificate of Secondary Education examination. Farooq Balsara came to St. Peter's as a boarder from Zanzibar in the year 1955. The exact date on which he came was the 14th of February. He was good in sports, music and art and he soon came to be known as Freddy. Unfortunately, Freddy left St. Peter's on the 25th of February, 1963, having failed in the class 10 examination. A thorough route through the original school journals reveals that Freddie acted in a variety of plays, more often than not playing women's parts. At school festivities, he began singing in public, wowing the assembly with standards like O Sole Mio and the Champ of the Gypsies. He was an accomplished boxer, a good singer, an outstanding pianist, an unbeatable table tennis player, and a thoroughly mediocre cross-country runner. In the school journals, we also found Freddie's first essay. Panchkani, February 5th, 1958. Dear Mom and Dad, I hope you are all well and Kashmira's cold is better. Don't worry, I'm fine. Me and my friends at the Ashley House are like a second family. The teachers are very strict and discipline is most important here at St. Peter's. I'm very happy to tell you that I was awarded the big trophy, best all-rounder, junior. I received a big trophy and they even took a photograph, which will appear in the annual school magazine. 
I'm very proud and I hope you are too. Send my love to Cash. I love my little sister as I love you all. Parak. March 15, 1962. Dear Mom and Dad, As I write this letter to you, I'm so angry because a terrible injustice happened to me. Let me tell you. We were all in the dormitory at Lawrence Villa. Victory, Farang, Derek, and all the other boys. Suddenly, Bruce started to hit me. Let's box, Bucky, he said, and although I said no, he just started. Within just a few moments, against my will, there was a boxing match going on, and I was in the middle of it. The boys were all screaming and shouting and throwing pillows at us. Because of the noise, Mr. Davis suddenly entered the dormitory and stopped the fight. Bruce lied and said I was the one who started the fight and that he was just defending himself. All the boys backed him up. So Mr. Basin, the principal, decided I had to be punished. And what a terrible punishment they picked for me. I had to go to the barber shop and have my hair cut really short. I hated Bruce for that. You know how much I love my hair. It'll never be the same again. I'm so sad and angry. Farak. Cool! Attention! Daddy! Attention! Cool! Let the light on! There must be more to life than this. There must be more to life than this. How do we cope in a world without love? Mending all those broken hearts And tending to those crying faces There must be more to life than living There must be more than meets the eye Why should it be Just a case of black or white There must be more to life than this India is my country That this rigidly authoritarian establishment, whose strange traditions have remained unchanged for half a century, should produce one of the world's most original human beings may seem ironic, but Freddie's unique individuality developed as a natural teenage response to the school's pressure to conform. We're standing here today on what I consider hallowed ground. Uh, this is the stage and the hall of St. Peter's High School where Freddie and the Hectics first started the band as well as the show. Believe me, I have goosebumps going up and down my arm and chills down my spine because I'm going back almost 40 years. They practiced in the hall. Elvis Presley, Pat Boone, yes, were there, but the Hectics were here in flesh and blood for us, and that was wonderful. There was Freddie on the piano, uh, Victory on the drums, Farang played the bass, and this bass was a unique instrument. It was a tea chest, literally a wooden tea chest with a bamboo on one end and a wire, or maybe two wires, I can't remember. Only one string there was. Only one string. And that was the bass they used in those days. But they made wonderful music. St. Peter's tonight. Better be there. Hi folks, live at St. Peter's Punch Game, the Hectic. Before he leaves boarding school, the 14-year-old Freddie jots in a friend's autograph book, modern paintings are like women. You can't enjoy them if you try to understand them.
Freddie had been back in Zanzibar for two years when in January 1964 a bloody revolution broke out and the Bulsaras fled the island for the safety of England. It was very frightening. It was really frightening. And everybody was rushing around and didn't know what to do exactly, you know. And because we had young children, we had to decide to leave the country. <laughs> They settled in Felton, a tough working-class suburb near Heathrow. If Freddie had the choice, he would have been born at the age of about 21 in Felton. Not even a dramatic drop in living standards could dampen Freddie's enthusiasm for this development. first came it was summertime. It was in May I think. But still we felt cold. My first impression of England, I didn't like it because it was so cold. And I thought, why did why did my mum and dad bring us here? We had few uh, known things what to do in England, you know, because we first of all we wouldn't have any servants. We had to do things ourselves, and eventually we'll have to go out to work to earn a living or something. Uh, so we knew a little bit of background what we were going to expect. Freddie was so excited to come here, he kept on saying, we'll all help to get that mom, and we'll do it, you know. And uh, that's kept us going. One of Freddie's first jobs was packing crates on this industrial estate. When teased for having women's hands, he defiantly told his co-workers that he was going to be an artist. He always kept on telling us uh, that we, we will do something in, in this place because he always loved uh, to come to England. Freddie stood out against other um, boys of his age it was because at that time the fashion for hairstyle um, was long and shaggy look. But when we arrived, Freddie had that very um, the old-fashioned Cliff Richard look, the very shiny back, the hair going backwards, standing up that kind of look so whenever we would go out together or come home from a bus stop or something I'd like to walk behind him because I didn't want to people to think I was with him <laughs> everybody dressed so differently you know and he being an artist his eyes are always for the best and good things you know and uh, of course with long hair at that time and uh, Oh, I said, boy, this is no good. He said, but everybody's having it, Mum. Well, the college boys are doing it, neighbor's son is doing it, so I let him do it. And I had to, I had to let him carry on. It was difficult in the beginning, but we all 